Hello everyone. This is Ashley the farmer and also Ashley the former for 25 years public school music teacher and playing professional French horn player. Today, because a dear friend has asked me to do so, I'm embarking upon a, a new series of YouTube videos to go along with our farm and also indicative of the life of several of us here as my wife and also my daughter have been music teachers as well. So today I'm going to start with the Brass family. I taught grades 4 through 12 and part of my joy was starting brand new young people in the fourth grade or fifth grade on an instrument that they had chosen from a demonstration that I and several of my colleagues had put in front of them where we demonstrated the Brass family, the Woodwind family, the percussion family, and talked about the interrelationship between the different instruments in the band and also the orchestra. So here we go. Today's lesson is about the brass family. And the brass family is typically today made up of instruments that are made out of some degree of brass, like this French horn that you have in front of you. It's a pretty complicated looking piece of machinery. I don't pretend to understand all of the, how it works, but the brass family basically works on the principle of <clears throat> making a sound through a mouthpiece as such, making that sound by buzzing your lips, Buzzing on the mouthpiece. And then once you put the mouthpiece into what is called the lead pipe on the French horn, the trumpet, the trombone, the tuba, the baritone. Now what I've just done is buzz with my lips by blowing air through, my lips being pursed together in a sort of a ooh. Put that into the mouthpiece and hooked my bottom lip sort of on the bottom of the mouthpiece. And then putting the mouthpiece into the horn and using that buzz, controlling it with air and the way in which my aperture, the opening of my lips, and make that first sound. That note was called C on the third space for the French horn. Now in playing a brass instrument, you have to sit up, you have to use your air from your diaphragm, you have to take your air in through your mouth and not through your nose, breathe with your tongue low in your mouth so you're not getting that sound that people get. You hear when people vocalize and they sing and you hear them take that raspy air in, they don't need to do that, but no one's ever taught them how not to. Hold the instrument appropriately and the French horn gets held across you with your right hand in the bell, your left hand on the finger keys, and here I have four keys, and then take your breath. And now the different notes of the scale <clears throat> are made on this version of the French horn by pressing the valves in different combinations. And you'll see that I have slides here, and the slides are of different lengths, and I actually have two sets of slides, one on top of another. That means I have what is called a double horn, or a French horn that's pitched in F, and a French horn that's pitched in B flat. So I can play the first bass F on the first finger of the F horn, with the first valve down, and now I can play with just the thumb valve down on the B flat horn, the same note. So as a playing professional, I had lots of choices as to how notes would be nuanced, how they would be played in tune, how they might balance another player or another kind of an instrument. Now some history about the French horn. The French horn was really just a set of conical piping where it starts very small at the beginning and gets very large at the end here at the bell. And that instrument didn't even have any valves before, so it was played as a natural horn. So it would sound like this if I played a scale on the French horn. It's kind of strange. Now that's because there are no valves to approximate the pitches. Now I'm going to play that with the valves. Now that sounds more like the scale that most of you 
would have heard and would know. So, brass family, trumpet, French horn, slide trombone, tuba, baritone, then there's all kinds of variations there is the piccolo trumpet, which is a very high sounding trumpet, which you might remember if you remember the music from Penny Lane from the Beatles. There are post horns, which are basically like what you would take on a horse with you to go hunt a fox in England. Little tiny French horn, they're basically the size of a little baby trumpet. Then there are things called Wagner tubas and all kinds of extraneous brass instruments that were developed and made for specific uses but the French horn is basically the crossover instrument from the brass family to the woodwind family. And in the band, that crossover instrument would be the saxophone, the alto, the tenor, and the baritone saxophone. So this is the French horn. And this may be something that you all recognize on the French horn. If you were to take and play five or six children's rhymes at the same time in the same key on the French horn, it's just an amazing sound. I don't have the technology to do that, but I just want you to imagine it in your head. So the French horn played with the mouthpiece, buzzing, air, blowing through the horn, using the valves to make the sound, and it's a joy to play. I've done so since I was in the fifth grade, which was a lot of years ago more than 55 years ago. So all of you, I hope you've enjoyed this first lesson on the brass family, the French horn, and we will do the next steps with regards to what this might mean as an instrument that you might enjoy playing or enjoy more listening to now that you've heard it. So just a little bit of a tidbit. <laughs> Google that, that's the beginning of Strauss' first horn concerto, written in F. Take good care all, hope you have a great day, enjoy, and this is for you, Katie.